In this video, we're going to learn about the backup database engine that was added in ClickHouse 25.2. This engine lets us instantly attach tables or databases from backups in read-only mode. And it works for both incremental and non-incremental backups. Let's have a look how it works. Now, to enable backups in ClickHouse, you'll need to have a config file that looks a little bit similar to this one. So I'm writing backups to the temp backups folder on my machine. Let's now launch our ClickHouse client and we'll do a show tables on my database. You can see I've got one table called trips. So this is using the New York taxis trips data set. Let's describe that table so we can see what we've got to work with. So you can see we've got all various different information about taxi pickups and I'm loading in the background a bunch of synthetic data. Let's write a query to find the most popular pickup NTA name and you see we get back it gives us a count of each of the different places where pickups are being made. Now we're going to have a look at how to back this database up. So we're going to say we want to back up the default database to a file called backup 2025-0305-T1121. Once it's run, you see it runs pretty quickly. We can then go and do the tree command on the backups folder. And you can see we've got the kind of storage structure that you'd expect of a ClickHouse database in that backup folder name. Let's come back. And now this is the extra bit. So we're going to create ourselves a database. We'll give it the same name as the backup folder. And then in engine, we say backup and then default. And then we'll give it that file name. And immediately we've got a database available. We can have a look at that under show databases. And you can see we've got backup and then the, the date as a database. Let's go ahead and update that query that we did before that was counting the NTA names for, from the trips table. So we'll just add in the backup database prefix uh, as the database name and you can see we get back exactly the same results as before. Now while we've been doing this there is a data ingestion process happening loading in loads of synthetic trips so now we're going to create another backup and we'll call this one 1128 and again we're going to create ourselves a database based on that backup and then we're going to write ourselves a new query. So we're going to compare the data in the two backups against each other. So we'll write one CTE that counts the NTA names from the first backup. We'll then do another one for the second backup. And then let's write a query that compares the diff of the trips between the two. And you see it comes back. We've got the NTA name on the left. We've got the trips from our first backup in the next column, the trips from the second backup in the third column, and then the diff is in our fourth column. This also works with incremental backups. So we can do a backup of a database and then we need to pass in that base backup setting. So we'll tell it work off the 1128 backup. Then again, we can go and create our database. Again, that's based on this new backup. And we can then go and run that comparison query again against the original backup versus this one, which is an incremental backup of the second backup that we did. And again, you get back that's those similar results. We've got the NTA name, we've got the count from the first backup, and then the count from the third backup and the diff. And that is the backup database engine.